Welcome back. In this video, we are picking up on Miriam Maisel's costumes as worn in the Amazon Prime series, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. If you missed the season one costume video, I will leave a link for you in the description below. There are not as many costumes as we saw in season one, but Mitch still has a full wardrobe, so let's get to it. But before we do, warning, there are mild spoilers for all four seasons of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. According to Vulture, Zakowska saw the show at a real transitional season, with Midge balancing her old childlike life with the changes that come with a career in comedy. While the costume designer looked to Audrey Hepburn for inspiration in season one, season two referenced the timeless elegance of Grace Kelly. I will show you several examples throughout this video. Midge and Abe follow her mother Rose to Paris, and she dons this sweet, fuchsia pink trench style coat with a straw hat. Of this new costume direction, Zakowska said, it's her version of couture, what you would wear in France. She adds that the palette in France was slightly darker. There is a big distinction between 1950s Paris and the lighter tones of 1950s America. Midge, who is clad in French pastels with a romantic flavor, pale blues, grays, and pinks. Zakowska said, the second look is my idea of a sort of French romanticism. I wanted that last outfit to have a light color tone like a Marie Antoinette palette and to establish a very romantic feeling as we see her walking away in that beautiful sage silver color. And speaking of Marie Antoinette, Mitch's palette is very similar to the costumes worn in Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette, which were inspired by the colors of macarons. I did a video on her costumes if you want to check it out after this video. Midge is back to wearing a soft pink coat when she looks at an apartment with Joel. Here is a coat by English-American fashion designer Charles James from 1956 that I think is a close likeness. By the conclusion of season one, the little black dress becomes Midge's official stage costume, moving forward and well into season three and four. The black cocktail dress was a staple in every woman's wardrobe in the 1950s, and each designer had their take on it. Zakowska came up with a myriad of cuts and fabrications for Midge to wear. Midge gives an impulsive speech at her friend Mary's wedding reception in this soft pink dress and hat. Here is a studio picture of Grace Kelly wearing a similar style of dress. In preparation for their two-month summer trip to the Catskills, Midge selects her wardrobe from racks of clothing. She is wearing this three-piece lime yellow dress suit for comparison, Dior created this late 1950s butter yellow and cream dress suit from Harsfelds, a Missouri-based department store chain specializing in women's and children's high-end apparel. For her Catskills research, Zakowska said, There are some small films that exist, and from those films I was able to figure out if the women were very into their clothing there. This was an opportunity for them to go out at night. They used to have these mini fashion shows, Lessons in Putting Makeup On. Midge's yellow and gray floral dress is one of many outfits that was created for the show by Eric Winterlang, Inc., which according to their website is one of New York City's premier custom costume studios. Midge and Rose's floral salon jackets are such fun. The Hollywood Reporter wrote that in season two, the sets and costumes synced naturally. Zakowska said, Somehow, production designer Bill Groom colors lean toward realism, and my colors lean toward magical realism and seem to have hit a good balance. She said, 
I am more heightened, he is more pulled back. We realize magical color matches can happen unintentionally. Zakowska said, women were very, very conscious of matching, the shoes and the bags being in some sort of color harmony with the outfit. These sort of elements really assert the character's personality. In a way, Midge is a character that never gives in, even if something terrible is going on. It's always about putting your best foot forward and an optimism that runs in the character. Vulture writes that Midge isn't allowed to compete in the pageant because she's broken up with her husband, so she revels by wearing a two-piece, which Zakowska characterized as against the modest glamour of the Catskills, though in keeping with maybe Van Doren and Betty Page look. Van Doren was an American actress and model who was largely regarded as a sex symbol beginning in the 1950s, while Page was often referred to as the Queen of Pinups. Midge wears a bird-watching outfit that has a similar vibe to this Grace Kelly outfit comprised of a wide-brimmed hat, blouse, and skirt. Play sets and rompers for women were very popular in the 1950s. Zakowska said of this more casual but still polished look, People will respond to the Catskills outfits, particularly the short sets, as they have interesting silhouettes. It's the first time I really got into prints for Midge. But she still put as much work into them as the cocktail dresses sing. I looked at tons of swatches and was fanatical about controlling the patterns. Grace Kelly wore a bathing suit in the 1956 movie High Society. We only get this short glimpse of Midge's white halter dress from the back, but I thought that it had a similar silhouette. Of Midge's striped halter set, Zakowska said that was actually something that wasn't popular, but Claire McCardle and a lot of American designers made these dresses that opened and had shorts underneath. It was the beginning of sports attitude towards women's clothing. And here is a simplicity pattern based on Claire McCardle's designs. As far as the quirky hat that's painted with butterflies, she said it's a little bit like a lampshade. The costume mixes the period and is true to the period, but also captures the humor of it and absurdity. When Benjamin is sitting across from the boat looking at her, he's like, oh my God. Here is an example of a scene that is shot day for night. The colors of this peachy pink blouse and skirt look completely different to how we see it in this display with the addition of the bolero jacket, which looks more to the orange than pink. Dresses with bolero jackets were popular in this era, For example, this 1950s pretty floral pink rose print cotton dress with a contrasting bolero jacket by California Cottons. If you're enjoying this content, please consider subscribing so you will get notified when I upload a new video. One of Midge's most memorable looks was this black and white checkered short set with a pink headscarf for her ride in Benjamin's convertible. Zakowska said, In Midge's Catskills looks, we did something we haven't done with her. We used pattern, checks, and flowers. Zakowska said, up until that point, I had kept pattern out of things. That's why the colors had to be very rich and very complex. So that was a lot of fun. Midge's Shantung fuchsia or purple dress, depending on the light, was also created by Eric Winterling, Inc., Strapless and halter dresses were in vogue in the 1950s, like the one that Midge wears for her stage costume. Here's an example of a midnight black halter dress from the 1950s by New York-based sportswear designer Greta Plattree. 
Midge wears a lot of teal blue, and I love this particular dress with a pink bow and matching pink felt hat. I found this picture of Grace Kelly at the Cannes Film Festival in 1955 wearing a similar silhouette. For the fundraising telethon, Midge wears a black silk bubble dress with a matching wide belt. Zakelska said we tried different shapes because I wanted her to have a great deal of interest. You see a little bit of moving away from the late 50s, just beginning to evolve into the 60s. Here's a picture of one of Pierre Cardin's iconic bubble dresses. In 1954, Cardin opened his first boutique for women called Eve. That same year, his bubble dresses became an international success. The design is still popular today. A loose-fitting dress is tightened near the waistline, bronze, and then is brought back at the hem, creating a bubble effect. Midge's salmon pink wiggle dress with a tab, from my observations, is the same cut as her teal dress worn in season one. Midge has a lot of coats, and many of them, like this one worn by Grace Kelly in this wardrobe test from the 1954 crime thriller Dial M for Murder, are softly draped and loose-fitting. I've taken to calling this white and red dress with a green sash Midge's jockey outfit, I think because of the colors and the little cream cap with the red ribbon detail. As you will see in the next two seasons, Midge ends it wearing white, indicating that after a season of bedlam and trials and tribulations, she has the opportunity for a fresh start. What were your favorite costumes from season two? Let me know in the comments and check out all of the season three costumes in the next installment. I'll see you in the next video. Bring the funk back. Bring the funk back. back.